The other thing that they're really getting on to Donald Trump about is this this hit piece from over the weekend in the Washington Post alleging that Mr. Trump created a false persona for himself in the early 90s called uh, John Miller or John Barron. He would allegedly alternately use these, and he would talk about himself. Well, that was really clever for him to use two different names. It was. and, and it's, That way it looked like he had a, a, a staff, an entire division of public relations, not just one guy. So that threw everybody off the, <laughs> <laughs> off the trail. There. So you just... Did you identify with this? This is not an unusual thing among famous people. People who have a great deal of fame and fortune, they do this sort of thing all the time. They don't have the time to go out and hire a competent PR person, whatever. They do it themselves. I myself, on occasion, uh, did have a persona that I would, when people would call in, and uh, I would try to pitch myself to certain newspaper guys and, you know, try to help my career back when I need. I don't need it now, obviously. I'm kicking your ass. I just want to make that clear. Uh, but I, I, I don't. I, back then, I would do that. Well, h- how did that work? Did you have a fake name? Did you disguise your voice? Did you use some kind of technological alteration? Well, I, of I, your voice. I'd and- like. I give you. I can give you an example of what it sounded like if you'd like. I would use the. Uh, I'd use the nom de plume, uh, Rush Revere. You know, when someone called in, they would call me oh, Rush so Revere. So later on, you use that as the. Yeah. The, the fake character to teach the youngsters the uh, correct view of history. That's in your, exactly in right. Best selling books that you've written. But I, you know, I would just talk. I mean, it was Little Rush Revere, wasn't little, it? Little Rush Revere, of course. Excuse me. Host slip there. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, sometimes you forget that you're not the real guy. It's crazy how that happens. And let me give you an example. Let's have some. Hi, Bob from the Sacramento Bee. Yes. Uh, delightful to hear. Hopefully, I can answer some questions to you about uh, Mr. Little Rush. All right, I, I do have some questions for Please, you. Yes. Um, what is he like in in real life? Is he as pompous and bombastic and obnoxious well, and should, self-assured as he appears when he's doing his radio show? First thing you should know about him is he has a huge penis. Uh, and that's just something I throw out there contextually. He's not. You're, in, you're throwing it out on behalf of him. Absolutely. It's a, it's a massive penis. Sometimes it blocks out the sun. And I just say that in context because a lot of women uh, who were around Sacramento at this time may be telling you that they slept with him and he has a small penis. That's not true. That's not true. These are vindictive, lying women. Th- Very similar to that David Letterman woman, Margaret, who used to stalk him. Uh, does, does, does Little Rush hang out with sports celebrities to make himself feel good like, uh, let's see, Joe Montana. Yeah. So I'm trying to put it back into the the time frame where 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 Little Rush would have been using this. They, they, or Barry Bonds. Or they want the, well, Barry Bonds was black, so I doubt that. Well, that's true. I mean, no, that's not. He here's what happens. They want to hang out with him. It's the other way around. Oh, natural, they're calling him all the time. His magnetism, his generosity, his magnanimity. Does, does Little Rush get lots of phone calls from celebrity women who want to date him yes. like Donald Trump yes. got back like, in there? Not, not like Madonna, but, you know, some people, they do. They want to go out with him, and it's very... So this would be right-wing women like Anita Bryant. Oh, well, he Betty put, Ford Betty called Ford, you. Yeah, that'd be fantastic if he could... Nancy Reagan, even? Phyllis Did she Schla- ever call you? Phyllis Schlafly calling in all the time, trying to get with him. Yeah, there's, there's all that shit going down. So, yes, that does. But Mr. Mr. Lil Rush, uh, in his days in Kansas City, before he came here to Sacramento, he used to be good friends with uh, George Brett, who will certainly be in the Hall of Fame one day. One of the great third basemen of all time. And uh, they just hung out together. They certainly just hung out together and... Uh, they swapped hemorrhoidal... That's right. Stories. <laughs> Hemorrhoidal ointments were a problem. Uh, and, you know, that, that's just how. But, he, that, he's, okay. but he's, a, he's a very down-to-earth guy. All right. I, I get the idea now. Can, can, oh, yes. Can we, can we transition back to... Uh, to that's m- kind of how we go. And that's not unusual. I mean, a lot of these Hollywood liberals, Tom Cruise or uh, Matthew McConaughey, they, they may have done the same thing. I'm not saying they did because I have no evidence whatsoever that they did. Has that ever stopped you from Never. asserting? Never. Not for a time. I make twenty million effing dollars a year. What are you You're talking making about? Making up stuff. 